What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about xylitol and the possibility of it causing cardiovascular disease. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment on the algorithm. I always know when a paper is something I need to cover because of how many times I get sent it. And when this paper came out, I got sent it a lot, people asking my opinion. This is a paper that recently got published in the British Medical Journal, the BMJ. It was looking at a sweetener called xylitol and its potential to cause cardiovascular disease. When people started sending me this, I was reading news headlines. I'm like, hmm, I wonder if this could be overreaction theater. And uh, it took me a while to track down the full text. I know all these influencers and news stations who are doing these hot takes are not reading the full text. Well, I did. So I'm here to give you the skinny, the lowdown on xylitol and cardiovascular disease. First off, you guys may remember about a year ago, I did a video on erythritol and its potential to cause cardiovascular disease and basically talked about how I didn't think that study really was good evidence that erythritol could cause heart disease. So this is a study published by the same lab using very similar techniques and very similar methods with xylitol. So the first thing to point out is that they were not measuring xylitol intake. Now what's xylitol? Xylitol is a sweetener that basically has a one-to-one -one sweetness, same as glucose. And so it's used as a sweetener in many keto-friendly products and many like low-carb products because it doesn't really impact blood glucose nearly as much as regular sugar. Now it still has calories, and it still does slightly raise blood glucose, but not to nearly the same extent as regular sugar. So it is a good sweetener to use for people who are looking to keep their postprandial blood glucose down. I question how important that is, as we've talked about before, but that's neither here nor there. The nice thing about xylitol is unlike things like sucralose, which sucralose is 600 times sweeter than sugar, you don't need very much of it, and so you've got to add bulking agents to it and it just doesn't have the same consistency as sugar. Xylitol is one-to-one -one the same sweetness as sugar, so you can basically, any recipe that you would use sugar for, you can just put in the same amount of xylitol, and you'll get a similar level of sweetness. So that's one of the benefits of xylitol. Now, in this study, they were looking at the incidence of MACE, which is major cardiovascular events, and its association with xylitol levels in the blood. So they did what's called a metabolomics panel where they ran a bunch of different metabolites in the blood and looked at whether or not they had any association with the incidence of major cardiovascular disease events. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because we're not talking about people who are taking in xylitol. They didn't measure their xylitol intake, nothing like that. Xylitol is produced by your body naturally as part of the metabolism of xylose, which again is produced by your body naturally, okay? So they showed these people had higher levels of xylitol. They were not measuring their xylitol intake. And I'll come back to that here in a minute. I also wanna point out that the cohort that they used were very, very, very sick people. So we are talking about people uh, average age 64, uh, over 20% had uh, diabetes, over 70% had hypertension. Over 75% had a history of cardiovascular disease. Over 75% had a history of coronary artery disease. Almost half of them had had a history of a heart attack, a myocardial infarction. Almost 20% had a history of heart failure. Over 70% of them were taking aspirin to help thin the blood for risk of heart attack. And half of them were on ACE inhibitors, uh, which again is used for people who are at risk for heart attack. So we're talking about a very, very, very sick cohort. Now they did the metabolomics assessment. What did they find in terms of association? Well, they found about an 80% relative risk increase in people who had higher levels of xylitol in their blood versus people who had lower levels of xylitol in their blood. So there's different ways you can do statistics when it comes to associations. And when they used xylitol in the blood as a continuous variable, and they adjusted for levels of CRP, which is a marker of inflammation, and most of these people had pretty high CRP, and they adjusted for other traditional cardiovascular disease risk factors. It went down to a 6% relative risk increase per standard deviation of xylitol. 
That's a lot different than 80%. Okay. Now, it still remains statistically significant. And again, when we're talking about relative risk, again, I want to explain what relative risk is. Okay. So if we're talking about population, I'm just going to make up numbers and they have a, say, 10% absolute risk of something particular happening. And they do something that raises that risk by 80%. It doesn't take it from 10 to 90%. 80% of 10% is 8%. It takes 10% to 18% absolute risk. So a 6% risk increase would be the difference between going from 10% to 10.6% absolute risk increase, okay? So it sounds sexy in the news, but it's not nearly as sexy in terms of the absolute numbers. Now, again, you don't want to do things that you know drastically raise your risk. Just for reference, something like regular smoking cigarettes raises your risk of cancer cardiovascular disease by three to 900 percent depending on like the dosage and the type that you're using there is an association there between not xylitol intake but the levels of xylitol in the blood and the risk of cardio of major cardiovascular disease events but once they controlled for confounding variables it wasn't nearly as sexy as what the news reported they also looked at giving a xylitol drink and they gave these subjects a 30 gram dose of xylitol, which is comparable to like some of the like keto ice creams that are out there that use xylitol, that sort of thing. That was kind of like their validation for using this dosage. And they found that postprandially it increased xylitol by a thousand fold, okay? Blood levels of xylitol. Now I know that sounds really scary, especially based on, okay, blood levels of xylitol elevate the risk of these events. But xylitol is cleared out of the bloodstream very quickly. Its half-life is like a couple of hours, okay? And at 24 hours, you basically have no xylitol appearing in the urine. This stuff is processed out of your body really, really quickly. And most of it is metabolized in a couple of hours. In fact, one study showed that there's no detectable xylitol in the blood after one or two hours after ingestion. So... Yes, you get a rapid increase, but it's also rapidly metabolized and people's levels go back to baseline. Here's the important point. When they did these metabolomics, they're not measuring xylitol intake again. They're measuring the blood levels. People with higher blood levels of xylitol, it's not even necessarily because they're taking in xylitol. Because even if they were, after an overnight fast, it's not going to be elevated anymore. It can be back to baseline. And if we look, like for example, the erythritol paper, we know erythritol as part of the pentose phosphate fast pathway. The pentose phosphate pathway is very dysregulated in people who have what's called like syndrome X, which is high blood pressure, risk of cardiovascular disease. It's much more likely that this is reverse causation, that these people are very, very sick. And because of them being very, very sick, their saccharide metabolism of things like erythritol, things like xylulose, Things like xylitol, things that are produced naturally by the body, is dysregulated, causing them to have higher levels of these sugar alcohols in their blood. The more dysregulated it is, the higher levels of these sugar alcohols. And so, of course, there's an association then, but it's probably reverse causality. If we're looking at xylitol intake, no studies that I know of that look at actual xylitol intake show risk factors for cardiovascular disease. And as I said, it's out of your blood in a couple of hours. It's back to baseline. So baseline changes in xylitol are more reflective of endogenous metabolism of xylitol, what's going on inside your body. And if you're a healthy person, you're metabolizing this quickly, you're not gonna have high levels of xylitol in your blood. But if you're an unhealthy person, you have high blood pressure, you have metabolic syndrome, you have risk for major cardiovascular events, you probably will have dysregulated metabolism and elevated levels of xylitol. Okay, so they did one more experiment where they were looking at platelet aggregation and thrombosis. Their takeaway was xylitol significantly acceler accelerated platelet aggregation and thrombosis, which if you're looking at like a myocardial infarction, uh, platelet aggregation, thrombosis, those are things that basically cause these platelets, you know, blood clots, things to accumulate in a, in a blood vessel, the endothelium, and that can cause a heart attack because you get all this aggregation of stuff, okay? Basically chokes off the blood vessel. So they took mice, basically they have a carotid injury, okay? They take these mice that are 
predisposed to have carotid injuries because mice don't absorb xylitol well. They did what's called an IP injection. They injected xylitol into the intraperitoneal space of these mice, and they saw it influenced platelet aggregation in a carotid injury model of mice. Okay, what does that mean for humans? What does that mean for regular people? They also did it in uh, humans who had had xylitol. So they gave them xylitol. They gave humans xylitol. Then they isolated their PRP, okay? And then they added some agonists, ADP and TRAP6, which induce platelet aggregation and thrombosis and found that people who had taken in xylitol had greater levels of platelet ag aggregation and thrombosis. So again, this is not in, they called it in vivo. It's not really in vivo. They took these platelets out, platelet-rich plasma. They took it out of people who had had xylitol and then added these agonists that cause this response and found that it was a little bit worse in people who had xylitol. Okay, so what is the take home from this? My take home from this is that if you have a risk of cardiovascular disease, you have previous cardiovascular disease injury, maybe you want to avoid xylitol because if it does, in fact, induce platelet aggregation, we don't want that. But I'm not sure it quite frankly does based on the way they analyzed it. And we are looking at what's likely reverse causation, especially based on what we know about how dysregulated carbohydrate metabolism is in people with syndrome X. So I'm not saying you should take in xylitol. I'm not saying that xylitol is good for you. However, I will say that it does cause less of a blood glucose response postprandially for people to take that in compared to glucose. Everything is not a black or white decision. These are all trade-offs. On balance, do I think it's better if somebody takes in xylitol versus pure sugar? I'm not sure. Um, I think if you're controlling your overall calories, I think the difference in your health that taking in xylitol is going to make versus taking in glucose or sucrose, I don't think it's going to make that big of a deal. Um, if it helps you control your intake, I guess it can be a useful tool, but I'm also not ready to freak out over this study because again, they didn't measure xylitol intake. They measured levels in the blood. And so it is just as likely to be reverse causation as it is causation. Not saying you should take in xylitol. I'm just saying I am not ready to freak out over the results of this study. And the people who are reporting on this, going crazy over it, y'all really need to go and read a full text. And if you can't read a full text, find someone who can. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you next week.